When money is deposited in a bank, we earn interest. This interest could be a simple interest or a compound interest depending upon the type and terms of deposit. But when we borrow money, we have to pay interest. This is expressed as a flat rate of interest or a reducing rate of interest. In another module, we have seen the difference between the two and their calculations. In this video, we shall explore the terms fixed and floating interest and how a floating interest impacts a borrower's repayment schedule. The term fixed rate of interest is often confused with the term flat rate of interest. While referring to interest rate, the term flat rate or reducing rate indicates the way in which interest is measured and calculated. Whereas the term fixed rate or floating rate is used to indicate whether the interest will remain the same or will it change or fluctuate as per the market lending rates. For example, when someone borrows a loan at 15%, whether this 15% is a flat rate or a reducing rate will decide how the EMI on this loan is calculated. In the context of fixed and floating interest, it indicates whether the interest will remain at 15% throughout the loan tenure or will it increase or decrease in future. Interest rates that do not change are called fixed interest rates and those which are subject to change as the market lending rates change is known as floating rate of interest. The term variable rate of interest is also used to refer to floating interest. We'll find the usage of the terms fixed and floating interest mostly in home loans. Because a fixed interest is meant to remain constant throughout the loan tenure, it must be able to absorb the risk of fluctuations. Therefore, at any given point, fixed interests are usually set at a rate higher than floating rate of interest. Let's recall the example we used in our earlier video where the loan amount is 1 lakh rupees at an interest of 12% for a tenor of 5 years. For simplicity, we'll assume this is quoted as a reducing rate of interest and not a flat rate. We had calculated the EMI for this loan as 2224 rupees. We used these parameters to construct an amortization schedule. Now, in a fixed rate scenario, there would be no change in this interest and therefore no change in this schedule. But if this 12% is a floating rate, then with every change in the market lending rate, the repayment pattern will also undergo a change. Let's assume that the lending rate increases by 1% effective the fifth month. In the schedule, we will see that the loan outstanding in the fifth month is 95,028 rupees. The interest rate has increased from 12% per annum to 13% per annum. A 13% yearly interest is equal to a monthly interest of 1.083%. Before the increase, the interest component in the EMI was 950 rupees and the principal component was rupees 1274. When we apply the increased rate on this loan balance, the interest component in EMI increases. If the interest component has increased, naturally the proportion of principal within the same EMI will reduce. The changes do not end here. Since the principal repayment is lower, the loan balance outstanding will be higher as compared to when the loan was running at a lower rate. The cumulative effect of this will be that there will be a higher loan outstanding each month. Ultimately, at the end of the tenor, there will still be some amount outstanding. This will have to be paid by the borrower either by way of an increase in their loan tenor by a couple of months or have to be paid by cash. If instead of an increase, there is a drop in the market rate, there will have to be a similar adjustment in the schedule. Except that now, because the interest has reduced, the interest component within the EMI will also reduce. Which means the principal component will increase. If the borrower repays a higher principal, it would lead to a lower loan outstanding each month. 
This will ultimately cause the loan to get over even before the predetermined tenor. Every time there is a change in the interest rate, a borrower can choose to make an adjustment in their installment amount instead of continuing with the same EMI. In our earlier video, we calculated EMI using this formula. To recalculate the new EMI, we must consider the revised parameters of this loan. Some part of the loan has been repaid. Therefore, the new loan will be the principal outstanding at the beginning of the month in which the interest rate increased. In this case, the fifth month. Out of a total tenor of 60 months, 4 months have already passed. Therefore, the new tenor or small n would be 56 months. Interest rate has changed from 12% per annum to 13% per annum. Therefore, the monthly interest or small r would be 1.0183% which is equal to a value of 0.0183. If we substitute these values into the formula, the new EMI will be equal to 2,272 rupees. Since this EMI has been adjusted to reflect the revised interest rate, there will be no outstanding amount remaining at the end of the tenor.